Good morning, Night Nation. It is Friday, or Friday as I like to reference it, and as we wrap up our week, um, the first week of virtual learning, I uh, just want to take a moment to spend some time in God's Word, and as we continue through Deuteronomy 6, we get to the end, and the command, once again, to remind them, what should we teach our children? Uh, in this instance, it's to teach what God has done for the people of Israel, and we're supposed to teach what God has done for us. And he goes on to say here in verse 24, And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God, for our God good always, that he might preserve us alive as we are this day. And it will be righteousness for us if we are careful to do all this commandment before the Lord our God as he commanded us. Once again, be careful, be diligent, be intentional about what we're doing when we're serving God. And There's a passage that always kind of stands out to me when I think about where we are to get our motivation. And our motivation is serving God. Uh, Jesus, in John chapter 2, at the end of the chapter, Jesus had cleansed the temple, which obviously was not going to sit well with everyone. And we get in verse 23... And now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs that he was doing. And so there were people who were blown away. They were in awe. They were amazed at what God had accomplished through Jesus. And this guy would show up, not really an authority figure, and cleanse the temple of God. And so people began to believe. They began to trust him because of the signs that they were doing. Now, what would your response be? Uh, When somebody pats me on the back or tells me that I did a good job or begins to kind of pour into me, it's very difficult not to get the big head and start trusting them or start maybe uh, giving them what they want, maybe changing my thoughts to keep that person happy. And we see that Jesus has no part in that. The first word of verse 24, but Jesus on his part did not entrust himself to them Because he knew all people. Now, we believe that Jesus is the Son of God. We believe back in John chapter 1 that nothing was created without him, through him, the world was created. And so he knows the desires of man. He knows our um, pullings one way or the other. And so he knows that we're not really dependable. And and that's in comparison to God, which no one is as dependable as God. No one is a consistent as God, but he knew we were emotional creatures. He knew that we had the tendency to be bought and sold, our attitudes change, our minds change, that we're kind of on this roller coaster of life. And one minute, as shown by his disciples, we're trusting, we're giving everything to him, and the next minute we're questioning everything that's going on. So it says, but Jesus on his part did not entrust himself to them because he knew all people and needed no one to bear witness about man for he himself knew what was in man. As we grow older, we kind of grow out of our gullibleness, right? But the problem is, is that doesn't necessarily turn to wisdom. It can also turn to cynicism. I'm not saying that that can't be a part of wisdom either, but it makes it more difficult for us to believe, to have faith. And Jesus didn't have any of those problems. In fact, man's inconsistency helped his faith and trust grow in God. I'm inconsistent. You're inconsistent. There are days that are better than others in our following of Jesus. But God is that bedrock, solid foundation that is always consistent. And even when he isn't, or at least from our mindset, not consistent. Maybe something that we're seeing or doing doesn't add up. We don't really know the end of the story other than God wins, which is enough, by the way. But we can trust in God and know that he's with us throughout the path. We shouldn't turn to the left. We shouldn't turn to the right, as the Old Testament says, but cling to what is good. Jesus feeds 5,000, and he follows that up by saying, got to drink my blood and eat my body. And as you can imagine, people were like, I am out on that. I don't understand it. I don't want any part of that. And people began to leave, and he he speaks to his disciples, and he says, are you going to leave too? And Peter, 
Mr. Roller Coaster himself makes the statement, To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. May we remember, just as we did yesterday, and we made the challenge to be grateful, may we remember today that the only truth, real bedrock truth out there that is consistent and can be trusted no matter what the evidence and facts say is God's clutch gene. He comes through in the end. And in the end, we know that God wins. And because he's victorious, we can be as well. Have a great Friday, Night Nation.